Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, I appreciate all my new subscribers and uh, all the good comments. Yeah, I appreciate those. And uh, if you're not subscribed, I, uh, please subscribe and follow along in on this little adventure that we're starting, or in the middle of it on this one. But today, <coughs> if you remember last time, we uh, we. Um, Matched the uh, the patches, did the patches and matched those. And um, the humidity is so high, I'm not sure when I'm going to get to do any. Uh, let me get this radio down a little bit. All right, I don't want to get into some copyright <laughs> issues. Uh, anyway, um, I don't know if we'll get to spray any lacquer on this anytime soon. Uh, Unless I get it in a controlled environment, the humidity is just so high right now. But uh, I've ordered the uh, uh, Profo Finish uh, decal. Uh, my understanding, this one, this particular one, is in one piece. Now I, I don't know. I'll see when it gets here. But uh, the preliminary preparation is this faux finish has to come off and this wood has to be no nicks no runs you know all that good stuff smooth and you actually have to put a, 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 an acrylic uh, uh, polyclear on it or something like that and I'll just buy Krylon one and I'll get that as we as we get further down the line I went ahead and bought some pro set and a Good soft brush to get the, to work the uh, uh, to work the uh, air bubbles out as we do that. But if you'll remember our game plan, we patched we patched the back. We're going to touch up some more with the uh, uh, to get all the uh, blemishes out of the the patches and the and the fills. <coughs> and then, <coughs> excuse me. Then I am going to uh, go ahead and put the lacquer, and I'm going with a semi-gloss. Had several comments, and I, I was leaning more to a semi-gloss myself. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and uh, I was leaning more towards a semi-gloss, so that's how I'm going with it. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish the back side of the cabinet, get this one ready for prep prep it for the installation of the faux finish and uh, what uh, we're going to do with this particular part and the front is I'm going to go back with a toner either a dark uh, mahogany or let's see dark mahogany or a deep red mahogany that's the two toners that I have and it should uh, be a, a a good contrast between this side and this right here. Uh, I am also going to this edge do it in the dark with whatever this is this is going to be the same on the edge. Now the prep on this got to remove this faux uh, finish which I'm going to start out with some 220 sandpaper and see how that goes and then we've got to patch any blemishes the only blemishes I can see is right up here and we'll have to we'll have to uh, let's see if you can see those yeah right up here with a few little nicks so we, we can put some filler in that now the other thing we have to do <coughs> is around the holes the inside of the holes and inside here has to be uh, uh, dark stain or toners so uh, and those have to be sealed also so I'm going to ask the question can this particular inside here does it have to be poly or does it or can it be lacquer so I'm going to ask those questions here before I get to that point and try to get that answer and uh then once we get this stripped, we'll get these darkened and sealed, and we'll get the poly on the front. This other will be finished, and then we'll be ready to put this on there. So I'm just going to start with this 
220 paper and see how it comes out. See how hard this is going to be. Uh, down where it's damaged shouldn't be that big a deal. Let's see if you're in the... Yeah, you can see, I think. But uh, I'm not going to bore you with sand in this whole thing, so I'm just going to show you. I think that's going to... It's going to be a slow go, but I think as you can see, um, I think it's going to come off fairly well, and then we'll just do the patchwork, and I, I, I'll do half of it and show you the progress, and then uh, instead of boring you with the whole detail of, of doing this. This is about 15 minutes worth. I started out with that 220, <clears throat> then I went to the 100, and uh, it, uh, once I got down to a, a certain point, then I swapped back to the 220. Um, and I'll probably finish finish up with something else a little bit <clears throat> finer. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using a, a, a mechanical uh, gr a sander on this. Uh, I used to have one. I never used it on wood or anything. I used it on cars. But... Uh, the one thing that, that that I've learned in woodworking, and uh, you can correct a whole lot of things as far as finish and lacquer. Lacquer and toners are real easy. You just use lacquer thinner and take it off and start over. Uh, but sanding, once you sand too deep, eesh, you, you know, you can't put that wood back. So... It's best to go slow and go into the wood slower. Be patient with it. Uh, I've, since I've shot the first part of this, I have sent a message to uh, uh, the company that makes the, the finish, uh, the, the decal, and I've asked about this particular uh, using lacquer uh, toner and also lacquer itself as the sealer. I've also asked about using a lacquer as the sealer underneath and on top. Now they've recommended poly. So my question is if I'm using lacquer back here and poly up here, there's a reason they're using poly up here and I want to know the reason. And if lacquer don't work, it don't work. So I'm going to use their recommendations but I'm just asking because I I can't see going buying poly if I'm using lacquer and I have lacquer. So that's just me. And I'd rather use lacquer if it's acceptable. If it's not, then it's not. So anyway, this is about 15, 15 20 minutes worth. Uh, I don't think it's going to be that big a deal. I went ahead and put some filler in those little notches up there. Uh, let that dry. And so I'm just going to keep working, keep plugging along. And I'll show you the results here shortly. Okay, we're back on this uh, trim piece on the front. Uh, maybe I can do this. I've mixed up some uh, filler uh, with some acetone to thin it down. The biggest thing are the nail holes and uh, this little crack right here. Uh, this particular piece right here, uh, I was able to sand it down almost flush. May leave, leave a little line in it or something like that. Now this this little dent here, I'm gonna leave it. That little dent, this little dent, this is where people have bounced the radio around a little bit. So it's it's not a big deal. You'll see the finished product here after a while. I hope I get to spray some lacquer on this after a while. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how this works. The the biggest nut. And I could leave it the biggest, not a concern. Make sure I'm in line of sight. It's, I've mentioned it before, and I've definitely got to get a new camera. Uh, this, this, this is not the type of camera that is really made for this. The audio leaves something to be desired. And I'm putting a little bit 
on it. I'm putting in these holes. I'm going to make new holes, and I'll have to fill those new holes with uh, and touch it up after I put the put this on. So the big thing is uh, reforming this. I want to make sure I got plenty there. And yeah, I usually put too much. I've told you, but the big the big thing here is you want to have more to start with, if, especially if you're fabricating pieces. In this particular piece, there's a notch out of it, and we want to make sure that it that it it's similar to the other side. Now this particular point. Right here, let's see, you may want to put a little bit right in here. As far as filling that, mm, I don't know. You might put a little bit there. And see how that works. And if it doesn't look right, or you can always sand it off. Yeah, this is getting hard to work with again. Doesn't take long for that acetone to, to dry out. Alright, let's let this set up and then we'll we'll hit her hit her a lick or two with a with some uh, sandpaper and see what we come up with. Alright, while I was waiting for that to cure or dry. I fill this in a little bit here. Uh, biggest concern is that it's level when I set it against the cabinet. Not necessarily all that smooth. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit this with some 100. Knock the high spots off of it. Big thing is shaping this particular piece right here, and I'll have to take a lot of care with this to make sure that it is the way I want it. So let me do the rough stuff out of off camera, and uh, we'll, uh, I'll come back and show you what I what I've got. There's the uh, piece after the toner. Really can't tell anything about it because it doesn't have the decal on it. But this is the uh, color that I'm going back with. I do not have the semi-gloss lacquer on top of it, but that's where the piece goes. Just to give you some idea. Is it rough? It, it, it's got some character to it, let's put it that way. <laughs> but, uh, I'll have to do this sides uh, as we go along, but it'll give you some idea what it's, what it's going to look like. Okay, I've decided to paint this blue. Not really. <laughs> uh, I have masked this off, and I'm going to uh, explain to you where we're at exactly on this project. Uh, I have ordered the decal, the Refo Pro decal, um, and the process and the preps that they recommend is to take all the old faux finish off which we have um, also to spray the very front of it with a clear acrylic paint okay now what does that do to the people that redo these radios on a frequent basis where you're talking acrylic versus this radio cabinet 
First thing comes to mind, acrylic paint and lacquers do not mix. They bubble up, they crinkle. As a matter of fact, that's how you get a crinkle finish for uh, type, uh, some types of radios is you spray lacquer over acrylics. The decal itself will have acrylic paint, a coat of it, on it when it's shipped. So from here forward is going to have to be acrylic. From here back is going to be lacquer. Okay, from here back is going to be lacquer. From here uh, is going to be acrylic. So I've masked this off. Uh, I'm going to take and I am going to go ahead and spray this trim and this edge with deep red mahogany toner, lacquer toner. Okay, the inside of the grill itself, I'm going to darken that with black acrylic paint. Once I do that, then I'm going to come back and I'm going to take this off and I'm going to spray the front of this with the clear acrylic coat. And I'm going to mask this off after I, I do that to, so that I don't get the acrylic on the lacquer and vice versa. Then once I do that, then I'm going to go ahead and finish the back of the cabinet. Uh, with my lacquers, so I'll end up masking this off, and if all goes well, it'll be ready for when this decal should be coming this this week sometime. So anyway, let's go ahead and shoot some lacquer toner on uh, on the edges here, and uh, we'll see how that turns out. Let's shoot some of this uh, deep red mahogany toner. Uh, on the edges. Now, I've caught a real break today. My uh, humidity is 33%. I'm running about 90, 90 degrees, but I'm still about 33%, which is good. Uh, if you're shooting uh, lacquers with uh, uh, the humidity up over 65%, that's the rule of thumb, 65% above then you'll have a blushing problem or a clouding problem or a, 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 an orange peel problem. The uh, wrinkle or not wrinkle, but uh, it looks like an orange peel. Uh, the other rule of thumb you can keep in mind, uh, the humidity is not that big a factor if the dew point is within 20 degrees of the ambient temperature. So, but anyway, I've got 33%, so... Uh, I'm going to shoot this lacquer today, and so I'm going to try my best to go ahead and get the, the get the cabinet, the rest of it done today also. So let's, let's go ahead and see what we can get. Let's, got a good pattern going. Uh, just, uh, all this is is just to, uh, to highlight it just a little bit. Just a small, even coat. Do it in two or three. Uh, we don't care anything about covering it in one and all this is is to highlight the cabinet a little bit so that's one easy coat let's let it sit and I may go ahead and just cut this off and then uh, do the other coats uh, you get the idea of it okay guys here we go uh, I've shot the uh, lacquer toner on the edges and on the trim. I went ahead and did the inside with lacquer. I'm sorry, with acrylic. Okay? Now I think I've changed my game plan in midstream, which is not that unusual for me. <laughs> I, I had to make sure I was liking the Ghostbusters. Do not let the streams cross. So I didn't. I made sure that the lacquers and the uh, acrylics did not cross so anyway what I'm going to do since I'm already since I've got low humidity I'm gonna let this dry for a few minutes and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna uh, take this masking off and I'm gonna go ahead and finish this cabinet with lacquers 
while I while I've got the low humidity. I think uh, at this time of year, I think you've got to strike while the iron is hot. So that's that's the that's the change in the game plan. I've uh, touched up the the back uh, the the uh, the little nicks that I've filled in and and patched are getting ready. Uh, I have masked over my acrylic front. I don't want to uh, get the lacquer on the acrylics. Uh, so we'll, uh, and here's another little trick. Uh, put your can of uh, lacquer in warm water to heat it up. That'll also help it. So let's shoot this with some lacquer and uh, see, see how it comes out. Okay, one light coat. I'm going to let that dry for a few minutes and shoot another one. Uh, one thing you've got to remember about lacquer uh, and radio, that's the, the, the finish of choice back in the day because they could put lacquer, many, many coats of lacquer on in a short period of time because they would dry almost instantly so that uh, is what uh, we're looking for so uh, so we're going to put several coats on this and see how it, how it turns out I added a couple of coats of perfect brown toner lacquer to help blend in some of the blemishes some of the uh, uh, repairs and uh, so I throwed some masking tape over, lightly over it, just to, to keep down the overspray. But uh, now I'm going to go back with some, uh, some semi-gloss lacquer. Okay, here's a couple of coats of lacquer. And I did put, uh, I misted it with some uh, perfect brown toner lacquer and uh, that's to kind of blend in the imperfections in the patches and uh, I am getting a little bit of uh, blushing but um, I believe uh, tomorrow I can uh, sand this sand it out and it'll be it'll be fine uh, but I'm gonna let that's all I'm gonna do to it today and so we'll let it cure overnight and see if we can get some low humidity tomorrow and kind of put another couple of coats after some sanding okay it's dried overnight and um, I um, pull the masking off the front uh, as you can see the grill is dark uh, this morning it's 89 percent humidity so good thing I went ahead and shot this yesterday now I've hit this with some 600 grit uh, sandpaper real fast sanding by hand very lightly uh, I took out some of the boogers I call them boogers but uh, also when you're blushing uh, I was telling you about blushing. It'll also look like lint is collecting. Um, you'll think you've got dirt and everything in it, but that's also part of the blushing process. Uh, blushing is, is just getting um, moisture as the, uh, the uh, uh, lacquer is drying. It dries fast and it still has uh, some moisture in the, the underneath the... Uh, the finish and that's what causes blushing and it'll also cause what I call little boogers it's like lint on it but uh, a good quick sanding of uh, 600 grit and took it right off uh, now I'm ready to spray the clear acrylic front on this so I've got to do some masking and then I'll show you the final results so uh, then we should be ready to uh, uh, put on the decal when it comes this week Okay, boys and girls, I've got the uh, clear coat of uh, acrylic, gloss acrylic, put on the front. I 
mask this front, this whole back off. Remember in Ghostbusters, you do not cross the streams, especially between acrylic and <laughs> lacquers. But uh, now uh, we're we're ready for the. Uh, now I'm going to hit this, and when it dries a little bit with some of that 600 grit paper, just to smooth it. Uh, the the whole idea behind this this front substrate is to do not have uh, dry wood because uh, uh, the decal will not adhere to it. You need a good smooth surface. You can see there's a little bit of gloss on the front. I will hit that with a little bit of 600 just to knock the little boogers off uh, and make sure I got a good substrate to put that. So anyway, that uh, is going to uh, conclude this video. Uh, we're ready for the decal. When it comes, it should be here any day now. So I'm going to let this set a day or so, and then uh, we'll, uh, the next one will be to put the, um, the decal on. And uh, that's going to be an adventure within itself. Uh, I want to thank everybody for watching and uh, making comments and subscribing. I've got a few new subscribers, and I really appreciate that. If you're watching this and you've not subscribed to my channel, uh, I invite you to, to subscribe. Well, until next time, this is Larry from the Hills of Tennessee. Thanks for watching.